Hi everyone. Thanks for checking out our video this week. I'm Chad Rogers from the Calamo Preaching Team, here to bring you the message this week about decisions, values, and God. I pray that you find it both interesting and helpful. What do you think the difference is between those people that are really fulfilled in life and the rest of the world? And when I say really fulfilled, I mean they have great, meaningful relationships. They're strong financially. They're generous with people around them. They're fulfilled in life. They have everything together. So what do you think the difference is between those people and the rest of the world? Say those who are struggling, relationship, or just trying to hold on to their marriage. Or maybe they're just trying to keep their kids out of trouble. Those who are struggling financially and don't know that they could be generous. They want to be, but they don't feel like they could be. Those who know there's something more in life can't quite find it. You know, those who are empty. So there's our opening discussion question today. Is what is the difference that you think between those who are really fulfilled and the rest of the world who are so often struggling. Now, it may not be what you think. And the difference is not their intelligence. It's not their talent. It's not even their appearance. You know, we've probably all seen some smart people who are miserable, right? Probably all seen or heard of talented people that are broke. We've probably seen or Know some attractive people that couldn't hold a relationship. I mean, just look at half of Hollywood. Then some of you might say, you know, I've known that person or I've dated that person. What do you think the difference is between those who are really making a difference, those who are really fulfilled, and the rest of the world? I would say that it all really comes down to our decisions. You know, our decisions are incredibly and indescribably important. The quality of our decisions determines the quality of our life. Now, there's a quote from a guy by the name of John C. Maxwell. And he's an author, professional speaker, and a pastor right here in Garden City, Michigan. His quote is, Life is a matter of choices, and every choice you make makes you. Now, have any of you ever heard of the butterfly effect? It's the concept of how small changes have huge consequences. You know, our decisions are much like the butterfly effect. The problem is, most of us, we're not good decision makers. And you know, we want to eat, right? But then we decide to eat more than we should. 100% guilty of that. You know, we want to be wise with our money, but sometimes we buy things that we can't afford. We want to be wise with our words, but we decide to say things that we later regret. We want to do the right thing, but... We make decisions to do the wrong thing. We want to love the people around us, but unfortunately, sometimes our decisions end up hurting the people that we love the most. We want to be good decision makers, but the problem is that most of us aren't. I mean, have any of you ever done something that you regret? Have you ever made a dumb decision? I know I sure have. You know, today I want to talk about the power of our decisions. We're going to start with answering this question. Why is it that we struggle to make good decisions? Why do we want to do the right thing, and then we always end up doing the wrong thing? We're going to talk or look at some of God's words to try and help us figure out, point us in the right direction, so that we make better choices and better decisions. We're going to look at three different reasons. And the first of them is that we're overwhelmed with choices. You know, there's lots of studies out there to show that we make upwards of around, I get this, 35,000 decisions a day. I mean, when, when uh, we wake up in the morning, it starts. What do I wear? What do I eat? Do you know we make around 227 decisions each day just about the food alone? I mean, think about the time that we spend in front of the refrigerator or digging through the pantry looking for a snack. 
You know, my wife used to have this sign hanging up in the kitchen that said, you have two choices for dinner, take it or leave it. Well, it's not there anymore. And since she took the sign down, I think I've gained about 20 pounds. Now, how about when we wake up or uh, make a trip to our favorite fast food joint? I mean, look at the size of those menu boards. There's so many choices. You know, when, when we go to get dressed in the morning, a lot of us have so many clothes in our closets and in our dressers that we stand there spending more time trying to decide what we're going to wear for the day than we do actually putting it on and walking out the door. You know, maybe we get stuck in traffic on our way to work. Suddenly, we're trying to decide whether you know, we're going to stay there and wait for it to clear or we're going to make a U-turn and go a different road. When we get to work, we take the elevator and we take the stairs. When we get home from work, do I sit down and relax or do I walk the dogs? Then we're back at dinner time trying to decide what sounds good. It's nonstop all day long, decisions, decisions, decisions. Sometimes it just gets overwhelming, all the decisions that we have to make throughout the day. And we start to get tired of making decisions. And sometimes when I get home, I would just like to, an adult, I would like to sit in my chair at the end of the day and not make any type of decisions. Then I turn the TV on and I have to decide what channel to watch. You know, as our volume of decisions increases, our brains start to get overloaded and we don't think right. Then we start making those poor decisions. When we make all these hard decisions all day long, sometimes we might end up coming home and do nothing but binge eat. We know that's not good. Now, we might have you know, made wise financial decisions a couple weeks ago, but now we're making those stupid impulse buys. Now, the second problem that I want to look at is we're afraid of making the wrong choice. And this is especially hard for us you know, when we're trying to do the right thing and make the right decision. We need to make sure that we don't miss God's will. You know, a lot of times... We analyze something and say, you know, I'm not sure that's the right one, or maybe that's not the right color for this or that, or, you know, whatever it may be. You know, since we're not sure, sometimes we don't make any decision at all, and guess what? We're actually making a decision to not decide on something. You know, the third problem that we're looking at is that we let our emotions overrule our logic. And I think this is where probably a lot of us just, uh, struggle in our decision-making process. And that's where it breaks down. But sometimes we spend way too much time analyzing. If this is right or this is wrong. If this is the best decision or not, and we fall into that paralysis by analysis. We tend to overanalyze what doesn't matter. But when it comes to important decisions, Sometimes we must react in a moment and make quick decisions. You know, it's kind of like in a football game when a quarterback and everybody walks up to the line. He's studying that defense real quick to find out exactly where he can throw that ball if he can. Or is he going to hand it off? You know, those are the quick decisions that must be made. You know, sometimes our, our kids make us mad or... Maybe it's a co-worker or a family member. Our logic is telling us to be patient with that person. But our emotions are saying, get angry. We know that's not right. You know, sometimes we have an unexpected temptation. Maybe for the ladies, it's at the clothing or the shoe store. You know, the guys, for us, it's a lot of times at the sporting goods store. You know, our logic is telling us that that purchase is not going to be right. What our emotions are telling us, you deserve it. You'd look good in that. You need that. Just go ahead, buy it. You know, so often it's our emotional decisions that end up hurting us or hurting others. You know, we don't want to make decisions that are going to impact us for years to come because, you know, when we base them on an emotion, Sometimes, you know, we might feel that in the moment. So here's another discussion question for you. Why do our decisions matter so much? Well, our decisions matter 
because the quality of our decisions determines the quality of our lives. You know, we make our decisions, and our decisions make us. One of the best ways for us to live a, a forward-looking, God-glorifying life is to decide beforehand what we're going to do later. You know, it's called pre-decide. So what happens when we choose ahead of time before we're in the moment? You know, our goal as followers of Christ is to ask God to help us make some of those pre-decisions to decide ahead of time what we're going to do in the future so that we honor God when we have those decisions to make. We find a good scripture for this in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. And it says, Commit your actions to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. So, if we use this scripture in life, if we commit our actions to the Lord, our plans will succeed. If we commit, commit our marriages to the Lord, they'll succeed. If we commit our children to the Lord, they will succeed. You know, if we commit our jobs to the Lord, our jobs will succeed. If we commit our whole lives to the Lord, our lives will succeed. We find it again in Scripture in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, and it says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So if we pre-decide what we'll do later, we must make that decision now. We must decide ahead of time with God's help that what we'll do in any given situation and not base it on emotion, but on his will for the better good. So whenever we're faced with that situation, you know, should I buy this? Should I eat one more cookie? Should I yell at my kid when they're not listening? We should already have that decision made so that we make the right decision. So if we pre-decided the next time that we go into a store, if we see something that we like, we're going to go and wait three days before we buy it. It's a pretty good decision. You know, then the next time we're in the store and we see something that's 50% off, you know, we're not going to say, oh, it's God's will because I've seen it. And it's 50% off, so I've got to buy it. Now, we're not going to do that because we've already pre-decided that we're going to wait some time before we buy it. You know, if we're always worried about this or that, we need to pre-decide that that moment that we start to worry, we're going to go immediately to God because we've pre-decided that we're going to pray to God. We take our burdens and our worries and we cast them on Him. And this is a hard one. Someone cuts you off in traffic. Predecide in that moment that if they cut you off, we're going to pray for that person to go to heaven instead of telling them to go to the other place or showing them the old single finger salute. Well, we don't want to do that. We're going to predecide now that we're going to respond in that moment. And when we search for scriptures about how God's people have predecided, we can see it again and again. We can see it in Genesis 22, where God told Abraham to sacrifice his only son. God was testing Abraham's faith. And in verse 2 and 3, he says, Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning, Abraham got up early saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God told him about. Well, Abraham had pre-decided long before then to listen to God and to obey his commandments. You know, another example is in Ruth chapter 1. Ruth made a strong uh, commitment to Naomi and pre-decided ahead of time. You know, it shows us in verses 16 through 17, Ruth says, Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and, I, and there I will be buried. And then in the book of Daniel, he and his friends had been taken hostage into a foreign land, and they were forced to adhere to the people of that land and to the cultures to the way they eat and live and so on. 
But Daniel had already predecided to follow God, to be faithful to God. So when he was forced to do these things, to eat the food, he wouldn't do it because you know, that would have been dishonoring God. He had predecided not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. He didn't wait till he got to the dining room to make the decision. He didn't wait till he looked at the menu. He predecided long beforehand and he said, because of my faithfulness to God, I won't break. Or I won't be weak in the moment. He had already made up his mind and decided to honor God. But Daniel did that because he knew who and what he valued. So what do you value? What's the most important thing or things to you when people talk about you or think about you? What do you want them to say? What do you want them to think about? Or what do you want to be known for when people describe you? What do you want them to say about your reputation that you have? We need to think about that. Talk about it with you know, someone that you're close with. Pray about it. And commit everything to the Lord so he will establish the plans based on your values that he's put into your heart. So what do you value? Do you value integrity, faithfulness, honesty, hard work? Why do these values matter? Well, these values matter because when our values are clear, our decisions are easier. When we know what we value, we can decide ahead of time that whenever we face a situation in the future, we've already decided previously based on God's word, and the values that he puts in our heart. I've had so many people in my life instill these very values in me, and I firmly believe that that's what's made me the person that I am today. And we pre-decide decisions for the future, so it'll save us from those situations or unwise decisions that we might regret for the rest of our lives. Decisions determine direction, and direction determines destiny. Our unwise decisions tend to add up to a bunch of negativity. But our wise, God-honoring decisions tend to add up to a positive, God-honoring way. So as we look at what we value, we must ask ourselves if our decisions are moving in that direction. If you don't like the way it's going, it might be time to change some things. It's time to pre-decide to do something different. And we must remember that when we're uh, faced with situations, because of who our God is, and because of what we value, we're not going to wait to we're in the situation and decide based on our emotions or whatever else we're feeling. We must predetermine before we ever get there, before we're ever faced with those scenarios. And we must be de determine what our action will be. So when our values are clear, our decisions are easy good news for us is that we're not saved by the quality of our decisions, but we're saved by the grace of God. Commit everything to the Lord, for He establishes our plans. With God's help, we will predetermine our course of action before the moment of decision. Now, one last example of the greatest predecision any of us has probably ever known was made by Jesus. Jesus had predecided that it wasn't his will, but it was God's will that he followed. Jesus predecided to commit everything to the Lord, and because of that, we have been saved. Now our closing question If your life is moving in the direction of your decisions, do you like the direction your decisions are taking you? Now, I pray that you have found this message interesting, helpful. If you would like more information, please reach out to us. You can put a comment in the chat box of this post. You can call or text Pastor Jerry at 517-588-8415 or check out our digital connection card. Let us know what you think. And our prayer challenge for this week is spend five minutes a day and pray for God's help making decisions. Pray for the ability to commit our plans to the Lord. 
and pray that our values are made clear so our decisions are easier. And now, would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the many choices in life, but we need your help. We pray that you would help guide our thoughts so that we would make the right decisions based on your will and the values that you instill into our hearts. We give you all honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I'm your neighbor, Chad, preaching team member at Calamo Church. Have a great day. Have a great week. Bye for now.